Hey there, Dr. Glenn here, and welcome to our webinar on adrenal fatigue and the adrenal thyroid connection. If you want to take just a moment, please silence your cell phone, close any apps on your computer. You might even want to close the door so you can set aside this time just for you. So this webinar is for you if you have adrenal or thyroid problems, and that includes Hashimoto's disease. If you've read all of the adrenal and even the thyroid self-help books and you're still confused or frustrated, if you've tried all kinds of supplements, if you've tried all kinds of diets, if you've watched all the video series and session series and all these things and you're still not feeling well, then I'm going to tell you what. If you're still having problems, if you're frustrated, if you've tried everything and you're still broken, then you're exactly where you need to be because that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm Dr. Glenn and uh, you know I just want to share with you one of the reasons that I do these kinds of things is because I love to see people get well. You can see this patient here, Shay. She came to me with thyroid issues. She couldn't lose weight. She was tired. Uh, she went through a program with me. She lost 40 pounds. She's now no longer even taking her thyroid medication. Everything's in sync now. And the program accomplished for her in six months what she had been trying for years to do. So I love to see people get well. So this is my office. A lot of people want to know, well, do you actually have an office? Yes, it's in Reston, Virginia. It's at the Plaza America uh, complex right next to the Whole Foods. And if you go down this hallway right here, this first door beyond that picture, that's my office. And the next door, that's our holistic uh, nutritionist, uh, Lenine, and she works in there also. So that's where our office is. It's in Reston, Virginia. Uh, I've written several books on functional medicine and things like that. So you can see those there. Uh, I graduated from Baylor in 1979. People want to know, well, where did you go to school and stuff? I did a neurology program uh, and when we moved to Holland in 1994. I've done almost all of the functional medicine programs. I'm certified with uh, Dr. Bredesen out at UCLA for reversing Alzheimer's and dementia. And I'm writing my PhD at the University of Arizona. So that's who I am. So I want to ask you a question as we get started here. Are you committed? Committed to what? Well, are you committed to doing the things that you need to do to get well? You're the only one that can answer that question. But I'm going to ask if you'll stay with me until the end because I've got a special offer for you that uh, I think you'll find to be very, very valuable in helping you get the right information and uh, so that you can move forward. So stay with me till the end, all right? Now, as we get ready to go along here, this webinar, it's not going to change your life unless you make choices. And I'm going to show you the choices that you can make as we go along. But in the end, you're the one that's responsible for your health. So as we get ready to get into this, I'd like for you to imagine where you would like to end up. You know, they say that uh, if you don't know where you're going, then any, any road will do. Well, you've got to know where you want to end up in order to get there, and this is a picture, this may, ap may apply to you, it may not, but this is obviously some happy people out with their child playing, and uh, so whatever you want to do, then you have to do, what you have to do is you have to evaluate where you are today. In order to get from where you are today to where you want to be, we have to come up with a plan. But you can't end up where you want to be if you don't know where that is. And you can't get there if you don't know where you're starting from. So I'm going to try to help you put a little bit of that together today. So let me ask you this. Why are you here? Just type it in the chat box down there and let me see. You know, maybe you think you've got some adrenal fatigue. Maybe you've got thyroid problems. Maybe you don't have any energy. You can't lose weight. Just go ahead and type it in there. Thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, where are you from? Tell me where you're from. We got lots of people here. Uh, okay, from, from Virginia. Well, that makes sense because our office is in Virginia. Texas, several people from Texas. I used to have an office in Texas. All right. And uh, oh, somebody from Australia. That's good. That's very good. All right. And even there's somebody from the UK. We've got people from all over the, the Eastern Seaboard, Ohio, uh, New Jersey. Okay, great. Well, all right. So matter no matter where you're from, you're in the right place today. So there you go. All right. Thank you all for being here. 
One of the things that we want to talk about before we get started, so we have sort of a reference point, is there is a whole new kind of medicine, and it's called functional medicine. If you've heard of functional medicine, just just uh, say so there in the chat box. Thank you. I appreciate that. Functional medicine starts with uh, what we call the root cause. Now, traditional medicine starts with your symptoms. Functional medicine says there is a root cause for everything that happens, and that root cause will affect a body system. And then when you affect that system, then you end up with symptoms. But what we've done in the 20th century is we started diagnosing people based on what their symptoms are and giving them drugs to treat their symptoms rather than trying to address the root cause. When you treat symptoms, you'll chase them for the rest of your life. When you fix the root cause, you will fix the problem and you can move on with your life. So it's not about what you have. It's not about the name that you give it. You know, it's about why do you have it? So let me show you a little picture here. Up here above the ground level, you see all these different diseases, all these names of things, cancer, thyroid disease, depression, diabetes, autoimmunity. These are just the names of diseases. They don't tell you why do you have it? When you come below the uh, surface there, you see the things that can cause it. Poor diet, inflammation, toxicity, uh, all kinds of different things. These are what we call the root causes. So let's talk about the adrenal glands for just a minute. They're little bitty glands. They're about the size of walnuts. They sit right above your kidneys. And what do they do? Well, they regulate your blood pressure for one thing. So if you have high blood pressure, you shouldn't treat that by taking blood pressure medication. You should treat that by fixing the adrenal glands. Uh, your adrenal glands also regulate your stress response, your blood sugar levels, hormone production. And uh, most of the people on this webinar are going to be women, and you might be having some hormonal trouble. I'm going to show you in a little bit exactly where the adrenal glands can go wrong in regulating your hormones. You might not have known that. So let's talk about the big five symptoms that are all related to adrenal glands. Well, the first one, obviously, is an inability to lose weight. That is almost always associated with an adrenal problem. Feeling tired and fatigued is usually an adrenal problem. Feeling depressed is quite often related to adrenal issues. GI problems, that is such a big, uh, big issue today. So many people have GI trouble. And also female hormone imbalances. All of those things are big, big symptoms that relate to the adrenal glands. Let's talk about some of the other things, though. Like we said, fatigue and weakness, especially in the morning or in the afternoon. If you're running out of gas, very likely you have an adrenal problem. If you're having trouble falling asleep at night or staying asleep, like if you're waking up around 2, 3 in the morning, can't go back to sleep, that is very often an adrenal problem. An increase in allergies is often associated with the adrenal glands, muscle and bone loss, and muscular weakness. You know, it osteoporosis and stuff doesn't happen because you didn't take your calcium supplement. It's almost always related to adrenal dysfunction. Depression is associated. Cravings for, for salt, sugar, or fat are related. Also, again, hormonal imbalances, skin problems, autoimmune disorders, PMS and menopausal symptoms. Low sex drive is often related to adrenal issues. All right. Lightheadedness, uh, especially when you get up from sitting or lying down. That's an adrenal problem. Decreased in a, uh, ability to handle stress. Trouble waking up in the morning, even if you've had a full night's sleep. And poor memory and even skin issues. I want to talk about the six main causes that I see in my office for adrenal fatigue. The number one thing is chronic stress. You know, stress is, uh, well, it's welcome to the modern world because stress seems to be everywhere we turn to today. The second big thing that I see is leaky gut syndrome. And, you know, you might even have a doctor that's still in the dark about leaky gut because uh, most doctors weren't trained anything at all about leaky gut. And it wasn't even coined as a term until a few years ago. So I remember the first time I heard about leaky gut, I actually uh, made fun of the person that told me. And then when I developed the 
leaky gut I had to go back to that meant apologize for being such a nitwit. Chemical and food sensitivities cause adrenal issues. Poor nutrition. Do you know that over 85% of people in North America have at least one mineral deficiency? Vaccines and vaccinations very often stress the adrenal glands and also things what we call stealth infections or chronic infections, things like Epstein-Barr, Lyme's disease. These kind of things will also trigger adrenal fatigue. Your adrenal glands regulate your daily energy cycle. And what you can see here, this is called a circadian rhythm. I'm going to take my little pointer and show it, show it to you here. You know, first thing in the morning, your energy should be high through the morning, and then it will drop down in the afternoon going into the evening. Then it should drop down as you go to bed. And then during the night, it'll start to come back up again until you wake up in the morning. That's called a circadian rhythm, and that's normal. Now, if you've had this measured, go ahead and tick it in the chat box and let me know because some of you have had this measured and a lot of you maybe haven't had this measured. And I'm going to show you how you have to measure it. Thank you. A lot of you have had this done. So let's say that you decide to go to your doctor and get your cortisol measured. Remember, it's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be high in the morning, low, going down in the evening, low at night until you come up to the next morning when it would come back up for you. So you go into your doctor and you say, would you, since you're doing my blood labs today, would you please check my cortisol? And maybe you felt a need to bribe the doctor so you took along a bagel and a Starbucks or something. Please, please. And so, all right, we'll do your cortisol. Well, if you check the cortisol first thing in the morning, where should it be? Well, it should be right there, shouldn't it? And would you say that's good or bad? I would say that could be pretty good, but here's the problem. If you only check it once during the day, you have no idea what the level is like throughout the day because it changes. So let's say that if you were to test your cortisol throughout the day, it would drop off like this. So this might be a person that would get up in the morning with plenty of energy, but by lunchtime, she's out of gas. She's fallen asleep, uh, you know, on the way home or during the school run. And, uh, you know, as soon as dinner is over, seven o'clock at eight, seven thirty, you're asleep on the couch. All right. So that would be where a blood test would show you one thing, but the truth is something completely different. So when we test cortisol, we use a 24 hour test. And uh, this is a saliva based test, which is the best one that, that uh, is available right now. And what we have here is we have an example of a, that the blue line is where this woman is and the green band is where she should be, right? High in the morning, dropping down in the afternoon and lower in the evening. So look at this. Look where she is first thing in the morning. This is a person that is struggling to get out of bed. She's drinking coffee all morning long, trying to stay awake. By lunchtime, she's starting to come up a little bit. Everybody else is getting ready to go home and she's finally got some energy to do something. The kids and everybody go to bed, so she's now doing the laundry and cleaning the house because she can't go and fall asleep at night because her cortisol is actually too high. A lot of other things that we like to use uh, to see what's going on will come in this particular test and one of those is your DHEA level and DHEA is one of the hormones that the body uses to make your sex hormones I'm going to show you that in just a minute but this person right is, is sitting right here in a depressed DHEA and so they are in like probably phase three of adrenal fatigue one other thing I want to show you that we like to check quite often is something called your progesterone level. And I mean, I'm going to get to a bigger version of this and let me show you what it looks like. So let's go over here. All right, this is a big blow up of that. And let me show you how this works. There's this, let's say that this rectangular box is your adrenal gland. Now here's what's supposed to happen. You take cholesterol. That's right. Cholesterol is not bad for you. In spite of what we've been told for many years, the whole idea that cholesterol causes heart disease is a 1950s idea that was wrong when it came out, and it is still wrong. But you take cholesterol, which is actually good for you. 30% of your brain is made out of cholesterol. You take cholesterol with pregnenolone and DHEA, and you come over here, and if you're a woman, you make some estrogen here and some progesterone. And this is where women get their testosterone. 
And if you're a guy, you will make your estrogen and progesterone in your adrenal glands and you'll make a little bit of testosterone in your adrenal glands and you'll make the rest in your testes. So women, you get your testosterone here and some of your estrogen and progesterone and you get the rest of it from your ovaries. Now let's say that you're stressed out all the time. Well, instead of coming over here and making this stuff, you come down here and you take the cholesterol and the pregnenolone and you take your progesterone so you can end up with an estrogen dominance problem, which a lot of women have. And you come over here and you make an excessive amount of cortisol. And cortisol is your fight or flight mechanism. So what ends up happening is you make your cortisol and then you've got all this cortisol that has to be cleaned out of the blood. So you put a big load on your liver for detox. And this is one of the things that helps to know, help us to know whether or not your adrenal glands are the reason you're having hormonal troubles. So what are some of the uh, correlations between stress in the adrenal glands? Well, first of all, understand that stress is a chemical, mental, or physical attack on the body. It's, and sometimes, stress is not always bad. Sometimes, uh, you know, getting married could be stressful. Having a divorce is stressful. Having a baby is stressful. Losing a baby is stressful. You know, stress is just is. It's a stress on the body. It's the context that makes it good or bad. High cortisol decreases TSH production and T4. I know that a lot of you probably have thyroid issues as well. If you have elevated TSA, uh, cortisol, elevated cortisol, you will never get your TSH or your T4 regulated. Stress deactivates the basal metabolic system. Chronic stress will burn out your adrenal glands over time. Remember, they're only little small glands about the size of a walnut. High stress burden can be measured by something called reverse T3. I'm going to show you what that is in just a minute. Adrenal support, though, can be disastrous if you don't fix the underlying cause. You, would, you take care of the adrenal glands by reducing stress, not by throwing supplements or drugs at your adrenal glands. There's a tremendous overlap between thyroid and adrenal function. So let's talk about why stressed people can't lose weight because that is almost always one of the issues that brings women into the office is they put on weight, they've dieted, they've gone to the gym, they've done all kinds of things and nothing will get, nothing will get the weight off. Well, let's remember that steroids cause you to gain weight. Now we've all seen people that, uh, you know, they've been put on uh, prednisone or some other kind of steroid and they get the puffy face and they start gaining weight. Steroids equal weight gain. Cortisol is a steroid hormone. Stress causes your cortisol to go up. Therefore, stress will cause you to gain weight. And if you don't fix the adrenal glands, you can stop eating and live on the treadmill and you still won't lose weight. You've got to fix the underlying cause of the problem. Let's talk about some symptoms of low progesterone so you can know whether or not you're shifting over and making too much cortisol. Headaches, especially around your period. Ovarian cyst, breast cyst and endometriosis. Itchy or restless legs, especially at night. Infertility or subfertility, what that means is you can get pregnant, but you're not able to carry to term. Now, a lot of times you'll, be, you'll have a tendency to miscarry in the first trimester. Heavy or painful periods. Bloating, especially in the belly and ankle areas and or water retention. Painful and or swollen breasts are often uh, an indication of low progesterone, irregular periods and or cycles that become more frequent as you age. Hot flashes, symptom of low progesterone, irritability and or anxiety, difficulty falling or staying asleep, and even dry skin or skin that loses its sort of its lifeliness. Uh, we call it, you know, it loses its fullness, but it loses its elasticity. So how does the thyroid fit into all of this? Well, let me show you. 
Let's talk about thyroid pathways and where things can go wrong. Now remember that your adrenal glands are down on top of your kidneys, but your thyroid is up in your throat. So sometimes we have to determine whether your problem is primarily thyroid or secondarily thyroid. And Dr. Datis Karazian out in San Diego, uh, he wrote a wonderful book, maybe some of you have read, Why Do I Still Have Thyroid Symptoms? And that is that he, what he says is that you have got to repair the adrenals before you can fix your thyroid. What I would say is you've got to fix them both together. So let's do a little overview of thyroid function. First of all, up in your brain is something called your hypothalamus. And I want you to think of the hypothalamus like the air traffic control person out at the airport. They're looking over everything that's going on and uh, they're telling all your glands and body systems what to do, turn on, turn off, turn left, turn right, pull away from the ramp, land, take off, everything. And your hypothalamus communicates with the body through its executive assistant called the pituitary. So the hypothalamus makes thyroid regulating hormone, which tells the pituitary to make TSH. So TSH is made by the pituitary. It is not made by your thyroid. How many of you have had your thyroid medications regulated by measuring your TSH level? Just type it in the chat box. I'm going to get myself a little drink. Regulating thyroid with TSH is an idea that comes out of the 1950s when Synthroid was created. It was wrong in the 1950s, it's still wrong, and it should have stayed in the 1950s because you cannot regulate thyroid by measuring TSH. Now your thyroid makes basically two things. It makes T4 and it makes T3. Now, it just so happens that T3 is the active form of the hormone and T4 is inactive. So think of it like this. T4 is like crude oil and T3 is like gasoline. You have to have the crude oil to get gasoline, but uh, you, know, you put gas in your car. You don't put crude oil in your car. Now, that's all well and good, but here's the pro where the problem starts. 93% of the output of the thyroid is T4 and only about 7% of the output is T3. So we have a problem. We have lots of T4 and we have to convert it into T3. So here's what happens. The body carries the T4 down to your liver and in your liver, if everything is working properly, then you convert about 60% of your T4 into T3. Now that's good. Uh, as long as your liver is working okay. So the liver just became very, very important in your thyroid function. Now, in order for your liver to do this, it needs some things called cofactors. And I want you to think of cofactors like nails. You use nails to build a house. They're not glamorous. You know, everybody wants to pick out the doors and the windows and the appliances and stuff. But if you don't have any nails, you're not going to build a house. So I want you to notice these things. 5 prime deiodinase, that's an enzyme, which actually takes one of the iodines off of T4 and turns it into T3. Selenium, that's a mineral. A lot of you have probably heard of selenium. Serotonin and dopamine are neurotransmitters. Now, we were told when I was in school, and doctors are still being told, serotonin and dopamine are made in your brain. Well, as of February 2017, we know that serotonin and dopamine, over 90% of that is made in your gut. So, all right. So if you have gut trouble, you're going to have serotonin and dopamine problems. If you have a serotonin problem, chances are you're going to be depressed. So remember, that was one of the symptoms. Over 25% of women in North America in their 40s are taking antidepressive drugs. Now, you don't have to share this if you don't want to. <laughs> But I would imagine a lot of you, thank you, are sharing, a lot of you are, saying, are saying, I am, yep. A lot of people are taking antidepressive drugs. Your neurotransmitters are made in your gut. They are not made in your brain. Okay, now we have 60% of this T4 turned into T3. That's a good start, but that's not all of it. So guess where the rest goes? Yep, right over to your gut. See, that gut keeps on coming up again. It's kind of in the middle of everything. 
And if your gut is healthy, you convert about another 20% of your T3 into T, uh, T4 into T3 in your gut. Now, your gut makes lots of things, including the serotonin and dopamine. So if your gut, if this guy is not happy doing what he's supposed to, not only will you not convert T4 to T3 in your gut, but you won't make the cofactors that your liver needs to convert this T4 into T3. So here's what I want you to understand. If you have a thyroid problem and you are taking synthetic T4, you're adding this in right here, you're adding extra T4 into the equation. If your liver and or your gut is not working properly, it doesn't matter how much T4 you have and it doesn't matter which brand you take. You cannot fix thyroid problems by taking T4, period. That is, a, that is a 60 year old idea that was outdated and wrong when it came out and it's still wrong and yet almost every endocrinologist I meet is still telling people they need to take extra T4 and they are wrong and they need to catch up. Now there's one, there's a couple of other things going on in here and that is your liver also makes something called reverse T3. Now the thyroid system is responsible for a lot of things that go on in the background, what I call climate control, what we, or what we often call rest and digest, Des digesting food, growing hair, doing all kinds of stuff like that. You have this thing over here called your adrenal glands, which we're talking about, and your adrenal glands are responsible for fight or flight. Now, if the lion or tiger jumps out of the woods to chase you or the Vikings land on the shore and they're going to come ransack your village, you either have to fight or you have to flight. And if you need to fight or flight, then you basically need to go turn off the thyroid system so you're not utilizing energy in a place that is not going to save you from the danger. And that's where reverse T3 comes in. Reverse T3 blocks the binding sites for T3. So if your adrenal glands are ramped up, you're going to make extra reverse T3 and T3, reverse T3 turns your thyroid system off. You cannot fix that by taking T4. It doesn't matter which brand you take. If you can't, if you can't turn T4 into T3 or if you have excessive amounts of reverse T3, it doesn't matter. Let me show it to you in a different graphic here. Your hypothalamus tells your pituitary gland to tell your thyroid to make T4, which gets converted into T3, which goes out and makes your cells do what they're supposed to do, all right? Every cell in your body has a T3 receptor site. Now, when you have a stress event, the hypothalamus tells the pituitary gland to tell the adrenal gland to make extra cortisol so you can stand and fight the Vikings or you can run away from the lions and tigers. When cortisol is increased, it turns off the communication between the pituitary and the thyroid and it turns off T4 to T3 conversion. So if you have an adrenal problem, you will never fix your thyroid problem. So you've got to fix these things together. I want to just talk for just a second about this thing called a feedback loop. Slow thyroid hormone production, all right? Cortisol functions in a negative feedback loop with the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, meaning that once the cortisol enters your bloodstream, its presence signals your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland to slow down so they don't trigger any additional stress hormones. But since these organs regulate thyroid hormone production as well, that also gets slowed down. So let me tell you what I see is the number one cause of adrenal stress. Now we talked about some root causes up above a little bit, but the number one thing that I see causing adrenal stress is gut inflammation. And you know why? Because even if you go on a vacation in the Caribbean for two weeks, if your gut is irritated, you just took your source of stress with you. So let's talk about GI health then. And what, what are some warning signs that your GI system might just not be working like it's supposed to? 
Well, one is constipation, diarrhea, or alternating of these symptoms. Now, when I talk about constipation, I say you should be going at least one to three times per day. I know some of you have been told by your doctors that going three or four times a week is normal. It is not normal. You should be going one to three times per day. Gas and bloating are not normal, and they are warning signs. Irritable bowel syndrome or irritable bowel disease, that's a warning sign. Brain fog is a warning sign that you have GI problems. Anemia and loss of energy is also a warning sign. An increase in allergies resulting from leaky gut is a warning sign, and so is chronic fatigue. Immune dysfunction is also one of the warning signs that your gut is not happy. There you go. I want to talk about leaky gut syndrome for just a moment. So what is a leaky gut? Well, leaky gut, or what we call in the literature sometimes intestinal permeability, that is a condition in which the lining of the small intestine becomes damaged, causing undigested food particles, toxic waste products, and bacteria to leak through the intestines and flood the bloodstream. When things get into the bloodstream that aren't supposed to be there, that's not good. So let's look at leaky gut like this. Down here you have your coffee carafe, and you want coffee in the carafe, right? So up here you've got your coffee grounds, and you see that white thing? You all know what that is. That's a filter. And if your filter has good integrity, then you get the coffee run through there, but the coffee grounds don't. Now, if you have somebody come along and poke holes in your filter, you're going to end up with stuff in your coffee that's not supposed to be there. So that would be a leaky coffee filter. Well, let's see what it looks like when it happens to the gut. Now, this is intestinal lining cells. This is intestinal epithelial cells. All right. These purple things right here, this was sent to me by a friend of mine down at the University of Virginia. And uh, these are the nucleus of the cells and these green sort of fluorescent lines those are the cell walls and you can sell the, see the cell walls are so tight together that you can't see two walls you just see one wall so they're like the row the, the walls between row houses or townhouses they share a wall all right now that's two minutes after exposure to glyphosate glyphosate is the active ingredient in roundup they spray that on our crops and it is a disaster Come over here. This is 10 minutes after exposing these good, healthy cells to Roundup. See, this is becoming disorganized right in here. This is what glyphosate or Roundup does to your gut lining. If we come over here, this is 15 minutes after exposure to glyphosate. And you see this right here? That is a hole. That is a leaky gut as seen underneath an electron microscope. So now you can tell people you've actually seen a leaky gut. So what is, how does this actually work? Well, let's use this little diagram here, this little uh, animation to see what happens. So this is the tight juncture where the cells are held tight together, close together, okay? Nothing can get through here. But there are certain things like glyphosate, there are other toxins as well. Gluten will also do this and break down these tight junctions. When you break down the tight junctions, then what can happen is stuff that's supposed to be up here in the gut can get through the tight junctions and down and into your bloodstream. And that stuff's not supposed to be there and that can produce autoimmune diseases, but that's a whole nother talk. Uh, but this is how you get Hashimoto's. The things that cause the tight junctions to break down also will actually destroy the cells themselves. And so you get another hole right there. So that is what a leaky gut is. Let's do a couple of uh, case studies and let me show you how we sort of find the root cause. Now remember, in functional medicine, we say there's a root cause. The root cause will affect a body system and then the affect the body system will produce symptoms. So let's use a few examples and see how this works out in patients. This is Matthew. Matthew went to law school and law school is supposed to be very stressful. So he went to law school, he exposed himself to stress, and then when he gets out of law school, he's working all the time and all this stuff. So that leads to adrenal burnout. Adrenal burnout leads to weight gain, fatigue, and depression. 
So in our current health system, he would be told to go on a diet, start working out, and here, take an antidepressive or an SSRI. Our whole system is designed to treat the symptoms, all right, but not to go back and fix the root cause. Let's do another one. This is Carol. Carol went on the church youth group canoe trip uh, during the summer to, you know, some rural place. I think it was Arkansas or some place like that. No offense to Arkansas. They have some beautiful mountains there. But, you know, you're in the canoe, you're paddling along, and sooner or later, if you're out there for a couple of days, you're going to fall in the river. Well, when you fall in the river, what do you do? Well, you end up probably swallowing a bunch of river water. So she got a parasite. Well, the parasite gave her a GI infection. So what did she do? She went to her doctor and her doctor treated her GI infection with some drugs that got rid of the GI symptoms. But here's what happened. Her parasite, because it didn't get rid of the parasite, it just calmed down her symptoms. And so she's now taking drugs for her uh, heartburn and all of that stuff. Nothing took care of the actual original infection, so what happened is she burned out her adrenal glands. You burn out the adrenal glands, look what happens. Just like Matthew, she gets overweight, she gets tired, and she gets depressed. Her problem is the parasite that was caused from the, from the bad water that she got. All right, let's do one more. This is Molly. Molly lived in the Pacific Northwest and her father was a commercial fisherman, so she ate a lot of fish. So here's what happened. Molly got exposed to mercury. Here's what mercury does. Mercury puts a huge load on the liver. So you put a huge load on the liver and she, got to, she gets a heavy metal toxicity and now she starts ending up with what we call cognitive decline, brain fog. She's starting, her brain is starting to go south and she's still a young woman. Now here's the other thing that the detox overload caused. It caused her to have a yeast overgrowth in her gut. That gave her sugar cravings. The other thing the detox overload did is it burned out her adrenal glands, which again caused her to be obese, tired, and depressed. So this one, she'd be told, well, you just need to get tougher in, about your addictions. This one, she'd be told, well, there's nothing you can do about it. It's, you're just having early menopause or something like that. And this one, she's told to, you need to go on a diet, exercise, and here, take this drug for your depression. None of these treatments fix her underlying uh, cause there. So let's see what old Molly looks like. Here she is. She's got psoriasis. That's an autoimmune disease. She's diabetic, hypothyroid, of course, a fatty liver. Oh, so her liver's not doing this job. She got high cholesterol. And of course, you can see poor Molly, she's overweight. So we put her on a program. We got all these things fixed and check this out. Five months later, she's lost 70 pounds and she's feeling wonderful. So let's so how do we figure out what's going on with people? How are we going to find some answers? Well, I'm going to do a little, I want to ask you again another question. How many of you have had labs run and you to, were told by the doctor that your lab test looked normal, but you still don't feel good? And they just said, well, there's nothing we can do. Your labs are fine. Maybe it's in your head or something like that. Well, in functional medicine, we say the traditional lab ranges are far too wide for good health. In functional medicine, we bring those lab values in to be much more sensitive. And let me show you what we mean by that. We're going to use TSH here as an example of a lab measurement. Now, in North America, TSH values anywhere from typically 0.5 all the way up to 5.5 can be considered normal. That is a huge range. That is actually a thousand percent if you want to look at it that way. In functional medicine, you know, we say, no, you know what? This is too wide. We want you right in here under this bell-shaped part of the curve. That's where good health lies. So a lot of times your doctors may be looking at your labs, but they're reading them using a value that's way too wide to actually represent good health. Let me show you how that works out in an actual patient. 
this person came in and her TSH was 1.87. Now, if you remember back to the previous slide, 1.87, that's really, really good. But you know what? Her doctor never ran the, the full thyroid panel and looked at all those other places where you can measure things. You can see here that all of her other measurements, her T4 level, her free T4, her T3 levels, are all out of range, and yet the doctor told her she was normal. She even had, this person even has thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies, so her version of thyroid problem is what we call Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease that attacks, attacks the thyroid. Let me show you just how off TSH can be. This person's TSH is on the low side. This one's right in the middle. This is good. And this one's on the high side. All three of these people have low T3 numbers, and yet their TSH is all over the map. So the next time somebody says you look normal because your TSH is in range, say, I want my whole panel run. And if you don't know how to read it, find me somebody who does know how to read it. Let me show you how this can work out in real life. This is a patient of mine. She had Hashimoto's disease. She kept being told that her labs were normal. So what we did is she stopped her medication completely for seven months. No meds, no drugs, nothing. And what we did is we went in and we measured her TSH on the same day of every month for seven months. In January, 4.5, little high. February, 0 0.08. That is way low, all right? March is 2.3, not too bad. April 3.8, little on the high side, but not too bad. May and June are way off the end of the chart on the high side, and July is right in the middle. I am showing you this because I want you to understand TSH goes up and down every day. You cannot use TSH to measure thyroid health. It is, a, it is the wrong measurement. Don't let anybody ever regulate your drugs again by using TSH. And if, they, if, you, if your doctor won't do it properly, find a new one. In functional lab testing, the tests that we run in functional medicine, they reveal what con conventional testing does not reveal. They explain why things are happening and not just what. And with the correct testing, you can pinpoint exactly what needs to be corrected and you can make, measure the success of your treatment. No, so now do you see how the right testing can get you the right answers? You can determine, is your cortisol right during the day? Are the levels where they should be? Are you converting thyroid hormone like you're supposed to? All of these things are important if you're going to pinpoint the root cause of the problem. Now, it's one thing to run the test, but you have to have a practitioner who knows how to read the test. So, it, you know, you can buy a book in a language that you can't read and it might look nice on the shelf, but it doesn't do you any good if you can't read it. So getting the right practitioner can make all the difference. And when you put the right tests and the right practitioner together and they're able to understand what's going on with you, then your life can be transformed. So let's talk about how to actually repair adrenal and thyroid disease. And something that I want to mention, I don't know that I mentioned it before, I did say that I have something for you towards the end, so please stay with me until the end. But also you'll see that there is a, a little box over on the side here where if you would like to get a free, what we call a free discovery phone consult where you can sit down with one of our team members. Usually it's Lenine, who's our uh, certified holistic nutritionist. You can ask some questions and find out some more. You can just click that box there and go to her registration page and you can sign up on her schedule. So let's talk about how you repair adrenal and thyroid disease. Well, you start off by detoxifying the liver, and that means both phase one and phase two. A proper detox takes anywhere from about four to six weeks. We normally take six weeks to detoxify the liver. This is not a three-day you know, uh, flush of some kind of thing where you feel lousy for three days and you have to stay near the bathroom. This is a proper detox, and if you don't do it right, you're just you're wasting your time. 
You have to heal and repair the GI system and the microbiome so that it can make the cofactors that are needed by the liver. You have to heal and repair the adrenal system so it and the thyroid system stop fighting against each other. And then, of course, anything else that you find, you have to fix it as well. Probably 60 to 80 percent of the people that I see are anemic. Most of them have gut infections. There's a lot of things that can be going on, and you've just been told that just a, that's normal or just take a Tums or something like that. So what I want to ask you, go ahead and type it in the box if you would. Has this been insightful so far? Just thank you very much. Good. I pre thank you. I appreciate it. You know, informa there's a lot of information available on the internet right now, but the hardest part is taking the information and actually putting it together and, and making it understandable. So what are we going to do? Well, let me show you what you can do. First of all, before we go there, I want to ask, you remember I asked you in the very beginning, are you committed? Are you committed to doing what it takes to get yourself fixed? And remember, we're not talking about managing assist your, uh, your condition. We're talking about fixing your condition because, you know, this is not something you should carry around with you the rest of your life. You know, I, say, I have people all the time, they say, well, I have a leaky gut. And my question is, why? Why haven't you fixed it? I had a leaky gut. I proved it with labs. I no longer have a leaky gut. If you do the right things, you can fix these things. Now, you have to make this choice. The choice is yours. You can stick with taking drugs and trying to keep covering up the symptoms and manage your symptoms, but I'm gonna tell you something. You cannot drug yourself back to health. It will not work. Or you can take charge and do what Dr. Bredesen out at UCLA calls 21st century medicine, and that is, Find and fix the root cause. Make this something that was in your past and is no longer a part of your life. So let me ask you this. Who would like to see how we do this in our office? Okay, all right. Then I'm going to show you how we take care of these things. And as we look at this, also remember that I have patients from all over the world. So we can do all of this stuff online. We can Skype, FaceTime, uh, you know, do all that stuff where we share our screen. So you don't have to be in Northern Virginia to take advantage of this. But let me show you our, what we call our Adrenal Essentials Program. In the program, we start off right over here with the initial consult. And in that initial consult, I'm gonna go over it in just a minute, tell you what we do. We sit down and we go through your intake and your history and everything that you have tried. Then you have what's called your lifestyle and nutrition consultation with our one of our team members that's a certified holistic nutritionist. When your labs come back, if we need to run some labs, and we usually do, then I make you a lab report video. You watch that, then you come in or we get on the phone together and we go through your labs. And based on what these three visits have told us and what your labs tell us, that tells us what we need to do to get you from where you are up to where you want to be. And we call that our essentials program. So let me tell you about the uh, the initial consult. This is where we start. And everybody starts here before we even decide whether or not a program is right for you. So we have we set aside 60 minutes and what we do is we go through your 26 page intake form. That sounds kind of long and it is. But we're going to ask you more questions than you've ever been asked and we're going to find out enough about you to start pinpointing where your root cause lies. We're going to figure out that root cause and start putting our finger on it so that we know what are the correct tests to run so we can actually start to understand it and uh, know what to do to move forward. We're going to review any lab work that you've had done, especially recent lab work. Now, lab work that, you know, that's 10 or 15 years old, that's not going to do us any good. But if you've had any lab work run recently, then we certainly want to look at that. You're going to feel heard for the first time because here's what happens. The person that does most of the talking during this uh, consultation is you. I want to know your story. I want to know what you've done. We want to figure out when did this start? What have you tried and what do we need to do? 
we're going to do a careful evaluation of your blind spots because it doesn't matter who you are. There are always things that we, we tend to miss when we're taking care of ourselves. I do it too. My wife does it. You know, I talk to my kids all the time and uh, we all have our little blind spots and we need to identify those. Then we will make recommendations for what are the right action steps for you to take. Now, here's my offer for you today. You can get a 24-hour adrenal salivary test at my cost and a clinical consultation. So let me show you how this works out. We charge $2.99 for the hour clinical consultation and the adrenal salivary index test. That, that's the one where they measure you throughout the day. That nor, that, that's a $420 uh, value that you can get at my cost, which is $150. So you can get an initial consultation, run the labs, and get a lab report all for just $449. And if you want to add a second member of the family to it, you can do that uh, at checkout. You can just tick a box and uh, add a second family member for just $3.99. You'll see there's a, there's a button over on the side here, over on the chat box side. There's a button, you just click that button. It will take you through and you can go ahead and you can sign up for this. But before you do, I wanna tell you a little bit more about what I have for you today. So you get your consultation and your lab all done at the same time. We'll send you the lab kit and, uh, and everything and you get all that done for just $449. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine, you've been dealing with this for years, I want you to imagine that in two weeks from today, you can imagine how fast would that go by, especially in the scheme of life. Two weeks will fly by. Imagine that in two weeks, you find out exactly why you have an adrenal problem and you find out how to fix it. That is a huge thing to not only know why you have it, but to know what you need to do to fix it because you can fix it and then you can move on with your life and you can stop carrying this thing around with you. Now I have a couple of bonuses for you. The first 10 people that sign up before we do our consult, I will actually make you a video lab report and send it to you so that you can look over it before we get that, sit down together or get on the phone together. And I normally charge $75 just to make that lab report and uh, you can get that for free. Now, if you, if you don't get the uh, one of the first 10, we will still go over your labs together, but I will not be sending you the video. If you want to get the video, you need to be one of the first 10 people that signs up. Now, and the second bonus that I have for you is you can get $25 off of the overall price if you're one of the first 20 people to sign up. So that means that instead of 449, you could get that for 424. Uh, and you can, you can get that if you're one of the first 20 people that sign up. So let's go over that again. You get the initial consultation, which is a 60 minute consultation. You will get, when you sign up, the, uh, we will send you your intake form. You fill your intake form and you send it right back to me just as quickly as you can. You will, we will also send you your salivary test kit. You will follow the instructions in the kit and you will send that off. And it takes about two weeks from the day you put it in the mail for me to get the results back. When I get the results back, one of our team members will call you or send you an email and tell you we've got your initial, uh, we've got your intake form, we've got your lab results, we need to schedule your consult now with Dr. Glenn and he will go over your labs for with you, he'll go over your intake with you, he will tell you where he sees your root cause and he will show you and, and tell you what you need to do to move forward. So you just, the button's right over there on the side, just go ahead and click the button that will take you to the, uh, to the uh, registration page where you can go ahead and enter your details and, uh, and you, you, need to, you have to pay for this up front because I have to pay for the lab when you get the lab run. So it's not something that can be done later. It has to be done when you sign up and that's how you get the, uh, the really good value there. So you get both of these for $449 and if you wanna add another family member, you can add that family member for just $399. 
Now there's one other option that you can do if you think, you know, I'd really, I, I want to do this, but I'm just not sure yet. What you can do is we have something called a free discovery phone call. And you can see there's also a button over there for a free discovery phone call. And what that is, it's that you can get on the phone with uh, one of our team members and you can talk about what's going on with you. You can ask some questions. They'll ask you some questions. And if you're just not real sure and you want to find out a little bit more about us and what we do and things like that, then you can do the free discovery phone call if you're not ready to go ahead and take advantage of the lab consultation the, the, and, uh, and also the uh, intake and all of that. <clears throat> so back to what we said before. Imagine that in two weeks, just in two weeks, you know, that's going to go by so fast. You find out exactly why you have an adrenal problem and you find out how to reverse it. That is just amazing. So just in case the buttons aren't there or they're not working, because, you know, every now and then there's a technical glitch. If you want to, uh, if for some reason the button is not working for you to sign up, you can go to the URL right here. You can just take that I'll give you a second. You can just write that down. You can type that into your browser and that will take you there if for some reason the button is not there and working. If you would like to call the office to get some more information, you can do that. If you, if you want to schedule your free discovery phone call, you can push the button for that uh, and you can click in and go to Lenine's scheduling page or you can either call the office at 703-303-8844 and you can do it on the phone. Some of you would rather do it on the phone. That's just fine. Or you can send an email to support at drgarlandglenn.com. I'm going to leave that up there for just a few minutes and, uh, and let you get that written down if you want to or if you want to punch the button, that's fine. Kind of go through it again one more time. So for... For uh, $4.49, you get a one-hour consult with me. After I've looked at your intake form, any labs that you've had run or anything like that, and you get your 24-hour adrenal salivary index uh, test, and we'll put that information along with your intake and your previous labs or anything like that. We'll pinpoint where your root cause is, and I will give you some direction on what you should do next to get this problem sorted out. So I'll give you just another moment to write that stuff down if you need to. Thank you so much for being here. And, uh, you know, we're, you can take these things that are chronic problems that affect people for years and years and years. And if you know what to do and if you know where to begin and that's why we run the labs but if you know what to do and where to start you can fix these problems and they can become a thing of the past you know this whole idea that you have to take thyroid medication for the rest of your life is rubbish and it's all based upon the fact that doctors have known never known how to fix the problem so they tell you of course you have to take the drug the rest of your life because we don't know how to fix it well we do know how to fix it now this is all over the literature and the research it's just that so many doctors are out of date they haven't kept up with the research so they just tell you you have to take the drug forever as a rather than actually understanding how these things can be fixed so i hope you having a wonderful day today and uh i'll look forward to having a consult with you soon and uh I'm going to sign off now, and I appreciate you being here. If you need some more information, just give the office a call. Send us an email. Go ahead and sign up for your free discovery phone call if you want one, or if you want to go ahead and take advantage of our offer today, just click the button and uh, register there, and we'll get your stuff sent out to you right away. So this is Dr. Glenn, and you have a great day today, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.